Jesus is the answer for the world today. Glory to God. Grace and peace. I'm Pastor Ralph Michael Rivera. I want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Today's devotional revolves around Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to 27. In our scripture, we're going to look at a group of people who are on the verge of not believing. You see, they have lost hope due to the circumstances that they found themselves in. Sounds familiar? Yeah, but Jesus, well, we learned that Jesus came and gave them a message that we could still use today to help us to continue believing. Amen? See, Jesus and his followers, while they always had difficulties with the religious leaders of the time, and when he showed up, they saw him as a threat to their way of life and as someone trying to turn people away from their religion. But Jesus had come to give them freedom. He had come to give them life. See, the problem was and still is that this world is still hard. We face disappointments, broken relationships, the loss of people we love. Yeah, we live in a world of great uncertainty. And therefore, the belief that we have a God who loves us and cares for us, at times for many, can be difficult to understand when he puts it in the light of our present reality. In our text, we read that there was a man who had a son possessed by a demon. It tells us that his son was overwhelmed by the presence of evil in his life, and his father was desperate for help. He was desperate for deliverance. But the biggest obstacle for him was to see the belief factor. You see, I know there are people who are listening to me at this moment who are facing the same thing. They want freedom from their problems but don't know where to, to find it or what to do about it. However, there was a man who had a son who was possessed by an evil spirit that was stealing his son's life. And according to the text, the evil spirit did not let his child speak, caused him to have convulsions and the foam out of his mouth. This man heard that the disciples of Jesus was in town, and he responded by bringing him to them. But we learned that they were unable to rebuke that evil spirit out of the child. When we read verse 17, you see, he heard that Jesus fed a multitude of people. He heard that he healed a deaf man and a blind man and that he raised a girl from the dead. Enough things had happened to give the father hope for his son. He had hope and so did the disciples, but we learned that hope wasn't enough to remove the evil spirit. <laughs> Why? Well, Jesus gave us the answer in verse 19 when he said, Oh, unbelieving generation, how long will I be with you? How long should I last with you? Bring me the child. He called them an unbelieving generation. Why is this important? He is <laughs> God incarnate, proving himself over and over again and again while he was walking amongst them. And yet the people were struggling with unbelief. And that makes him doubt. And that unbelief causes them not to trust and believe in him 100%. So why is this important to know? Because unbelief prevents us from having access to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's like having something clog your gas line and it doesn't allow the gas to get to the engine. Without belief, there is no power. <laughs> so let's think about our lives right now. What, what fears do we have? What is worrying us deeply? What is keeping us captive? Brothers and sisters, each of these situations that we go through are important lessons. We are all inadequate on our own. That's what it teaches us. 
But God welcomes us and loves us exactly for who we are and where we are. See, he loves us when we're weak. He reveals his strength to us. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. See, our limitations do not limit God. In him we are complete. He tells us, my grace is sufficient for you. For you, brothers and sisters. For me. For my power was made perfect, he says, in weakness. 2 Corinthians, verse 12, 9. See, insisting that we must be strong for ourselves is the true weakness. When we rely on our own strength, we stop depending on God and then fail. This is why James wrote, but he gives us more grace. And that is why scripture says, God resists the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Are you humble? James chapter four, verse six. You see, brothers and sisters, the strongest person admits his weaknesses, and the greatest is he who learns how to walk in humility according to the word of God. See, when we recognize that we can do nothing apart from God and trust that he will work in us, then we will walk in victory. We must learn to look away from ourselves completely and focus on the one who is the source of all good things. Then we give him the glory for our story. His son's father had hope. And that is the beginning of all things, I guess, for some, but it's about faith and about belief. Do you have faith? Do you believe? Then fight on. Run your race. Eyes on the one who could do all things. Have yourself a great day. I'm Pastor Ralph Michael Rivera. His peace be with you.